Hi, Joe. Thanks for letting me record this session. Thanks, um, so we've been working for what more than on this particular oh. course. Like we've been working together for a yeah, while. Yeah, we've been working together for maybe nine months, do you maybe think, or months. longer? Yeah, it's um, been a while. Yeah, it has been a long time. But we've been like going back and forth on different yeah, types yeah. of things, right? So now yeah. we're on like a, a complete maybe this course. course since maybe the last three months maybe yeah 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 i think we've yeah. we've changed it around a bit um yeah. <laughs> which is good right because why i wanted to speak to you specifically is that we've seen your goal for this particular course evolve drastically. so many times <laughs> so many times but the reason for that is because you've gone out and you've spoken to your clients, whether they're current clients, ideal clients, potential clients, whatever they are, you, you've gone and out to the marketplace and you've gathered this research on what can best support your clients. Yeah. And if you don't mind me explaining, um, your sure. clients, uh, so Joe helps parents who are, let me see, who have children with, would you say? I'd say special needs. Special yeah. needs. So yeah. Jo, Joanne, Jo, helps Joy. Um, parents who have children with special needs. And a lot of the time, these parents are focusing on their child, how to best support their child. And what Joe has found, what Joe has experienced working with clients is that very often they forget about their own needs. So Joe specifically helps the parents, the parents to take control, let's say, or to learn yeah. how to take better support of themselves so that they can then better support the people that depend on them, their children, their partners, their, their relationships around them. Yeah. So that's what Joe does. Now, I, I guess you can imagine there are so many different ways that Joe can possibly support these parents and finding the best way that she can support these parents has been a long journey for you. I think we've yeah. been involved in that journey and it's changed so much because there's so many different ways that you could possibly support these parents. So you were working and you have been working one-on-one -on -one with your clients and now you want to, this particular course is offering a, a type of support group for parents so that they're not having to come on one-on-one, -on -one, they can actually work with groups of people, right? So yeah. I, what I love so much about your course is that it's not like a do it once, upload it online and just, you know, let it go into the cloud and watch the money come in. It's actually, I wish it was. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it kind of is in a way, but it's, it's in a way, it's yeah, being it's able to personal. support more people. It's personal, yeah. it's been able to support more people, it's been able to provide them the support that they need without feeling like, okay, this is a time just for me, right? They're yeah. actually finding a, a group of people. Anyway, yes. we're getting off track a lot. The point that I <laughs> wanted to no, that was me. The point that I wanted to say was that I really liked um, how we've refined that so much. Yes. And we've come back to the drawing board multiple times. And what Joe and I have done is realize that the course goal isn't specific enough. Yes. And you created, how many courses have you created, Joe? Um, well, I've, I've fully com completed one online course and mm -hmm. then I've got another course that I used to give face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. I've got a third one in the process and now I'm like, <laughs> and now there's this one which I will be yes. taking from all of those mm -hmm. courses. Yeah. Perfect. And what we've what we've done a lot is that we realise that Jo has always had this intention, okay, I'm going to do another course, I'm going to do another course, and she's got all of this content that's being designed. And then she will go to sit down and design the content and, okay, well, what do I do now? Where do I start? Right? Yeah. So what we've been working on the most is by designing that, plan designing the outline of what your course will look like um so i guess the question i have for you is what what do you see different from this time in regards to the how do you feel this time in regards to your course of what you felt three months ago when you just had this course open? well 
Well, I think three months ago I was trying to put all my knowledge, everything I possibly could do to help parents into one package. And I've realised that they're very separate um, you know, there's there's different ways, like you said, there's like a parent support group, which is totally, um, which gets the the need, one need met mm-hmm. and, you know, an online course that can get another need met. So um, I think in the past I was just trying to put everything into one and like verbal diarrhoea, get everything that I possibly could, all my knowledge, as much value as I possibly could. And I've realised that I don't think that serves my client the best way that it can so you know to to narrow down and I thought I had narrowed down my niche um but to narrow down my the information that I'm giving so that I'm not overloading them so that they can actually take in Mm -hmm. so I think that's the biggest change the biggest shift for me in the last couple of months is being okay with just focusing in on one area to support them and having multiple either multiple um online courses or multiple ways for people to get the different information without it all being in one big lump where they can't they can't take it all in Mm -hmm. and I think that's so powerful that you recognize that as well because took a while (laughs) it takes us all a while as as entrepreneurs as educators I think you and I are very similar that we just want to give, 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 give. And we yeah. keep giving a lot of people are like that, that they just want to give as much information as they can. And that is good. That's a good thing. But packaging yeah. all of that that you want to share in one course is where, like you said, you can overload your client. And in, in education, that's what you would call a cognitive overload, where you're literally giving them all this information and yeah. they kind of walk away and go, well, what did I actually learn? Because I cannot remember anything, yeah. right? Think about if, you, um, if you're if you given a huge basket, let's say you've got a basket in your hands and people keep putting all these different things into it and it's overflowing, overflowing, and eventually the, ground, the basket just breaks and gives way yeah. and everything that you had in your hands is completely gone. Think about yeah. that with information that you're putting into this totally. basket. Yeah. And even yeah. though you want to give them this huge basket that's overflowing, full of gifts, full of knowledge, full of experiences, what yeah. does it actually benefit at the end of the day? Yeah. Especially for me when I'm trying to reduce the stress and overwhelm of a parent, the last thing I want to do is make them feel more overwhelmed. Exactly. Yeah. And you've stated as well that, well, maybe having little courses, maybe having these little bundle courses so I can still give them all of that knowledge but package in it in a much easier way to consume that's not yeah. going to overwhelm them in the long run and, and making them feel worse than like what they did when they came to you, right? Exactly, yeah. And so first we identified the main goal and mm. what we worked on together is once we had that main goal, we then went into the three to five learning outcomes, which you can call this whatever you like. You can call it an outcome, objective, a milestone, a stepping stone. The only thing that I would suggest not to call it is a mini goal because that just gets confusing, right? Yeah. But they're your stepping stones that you take. Well, the stepping stones that you say, well, how do I get my client from where they currently are to this goal? And then so going back and speaking to your clients and speaking to the people in your industry that you have you've then realized okay well these are the five areas that they the three to five areas that they need to practice because you now know where they currently are and where they want to go and even what I remember is that when we started to break those down we started to change them a little bit we went back to the goal we redefined the goal we went back and we changed those three to five outcomes again and I felt like for about three weeks in a row we came we back just... to chat and you said, I've changed it again. And I feel so yes. good about it because it's so much more narrow. It's so much more clearer. I know exactly what I'm doing now. And then the next yes. week you come back and say, I feel so good. It's really clear. Um, and this is a good process because we're identifying what information or what parts of that knowledge that we just wanted to give everyone, what is no longer relevant for this particular course. Yeah. You know? yeah. So you might put it into a different course later on. You might save all of those pieces of paper you had because you may have yeah. written a really, a really good course for a later time. 
Yeah. And what that allows us to do by identifying these outcomes, these stepping stones that helps us to keep on track. Yeah. So how do you feel about your outcomes now? Have you revised them in the last <sighs> couple of weeks? Yeah, I'm just looking at what my latest ones are. Um, yeah, so I do have, I've got four. I've got four outcomes here. That, did you want me to share them? Whatever you would like to do. I think I think I, I don't want to specifically state your objectives because there's a whole lot of background that we've got yeah. to to get to them, right? But yeah. I just wanted to speak about them more generally. Okay. So for, first of all, if you could share the first word of all four, that would be useful. Uh, so the first one is recognise. The second one is define, the third one is discover, and the fourth one is develop. Perfect. Thank you. So there's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about here because it took us a while to get to that. And there will yes. be several times when you say something and I'll say, uh-uh, that's not yes. good. Like, that's I won't not read what enough. the... I won't read what the first word of the first time I wrote it was. No, but the, if you didn't have that first draft, how could you have yes. gotten to where you are now, right? Yeah. So the, the main important thing that I'm trying to highlight here is that each of those verbs is, well, each of those words is a verb, but most importantly, they are a present tense verb. Something that I can discover something now, I can discover something in the future. It's something that I've learned and I'm going to continue to be able to do it. Right. Yes. So the key words here is that you can't just throw in any old verb because they don't all work. Some of the verbs we have is what we're doing right now, such yes. as I might be Googling something. I might be listening to a podcast. I might be watching a video. They're all yes. verbs. But that's something I'm doing to help me learn that gets me to that outcome of recognize, to be able to define. So what we work with a lot is saying that phrase to ourselves. If my, for my client to reach the overall goal, they need to have the ability to, and you can't say they need to have the ability to Googling, they need to have the ability no. to watching. It's just not possible. So I like yeah. that little kind of, algorithm yeah, that, formula that helped me so much yeah because mm -hmm. it kind of forces you to make sure that you're writing something that is a competency that is an ability that they're going to grow and what we've spoken about i've spoken about it in my facebook group you and i have spoken about it several times is this yeah <laughs> but i keep showing so <laughs> these are um the look i don't want to get too far into it but these are based on um on bloom's taxonomy so in in education, Bloom's Taxonomy talks about how there are six different levels to learning. There's a lot more that I could go on about, but let's just use that basics. There's six levels to learning and it's like a, a, a scaffold. So here, the scaffold starts from here. So it goes down like a mine. And I like to talk about them in groups of three, just to help us a little bit more to understand to be able to group things together. So we've got knowledge and understanding, which is like your comprehension. And I just called that knowledge. Yes. And you've got apply and analyze, and that's your skills. And then you have evaluate and create, which is your abilities. Now, knowledge, skills, and abilities is a different area of learning, and they are your competencies. So another way, I think we were in a meeting recently with a peer of ours, and she just turned around and had this best algorithm that I want, not yes. algorithm, but this best analogy that I just thought, oh, that makes so much sense. So she said, okay, so knowledge, skills, and abilities is, okay, well, uh, what do I know? I'm trying to remember what she said. Um, no practice do. Right? Yeah. And I just thought that's perfect because these levels are, okay, well, what types of things do you need to start to comprehend so mm. that you can then practice something? so that you can then do something and you have the ability to do something. So what you can see with um, your learning outcomes, Joe, is that they go recognize, define, discover, and develop. And recognize and define sit within these comprehensions. 
Discover sits within these and then develops its in within these. So each outcome, you're designing this journey. You're saying, okay, well, yeah. first, the, the outcomes that we're going to achieve first is the base level that we need to then be able to build onto the next level, to be able to build on the next level, like a scaffold. And for me, and for a lot of people in education, is creating this journey, is making sure that when we create our content for our clients in our course, we're making sure that the content is aligned to each of these outcomes so that we're creating the journey for them. That we're not going, oh, read this, then read this, and then read this, and we're going from recognize to develop to discover to something that's completely different that's outside of our outcomes altogether, right? So yeah. this is like a really good shell to keep a track of. So have you got this all written down in your notebook? Yes. Okay. Have you transferred it to the spreadsheet that I've sent to you? uh no sorry <laughs> no don't be sorry because that helps us with our next step that we need to start on that next step is doing our competencies which you've been playing around with a bit yes so i think i'm going to share my screen with you um mm -hmm. i'm just going to find what i need first which will be helpful right So what I wanted to share with you is my the, the spreadsheet that I share with clients, with people I work with, you can download it for free as well, is the, I'm just trying to find it. Um, I had it open and now I can't find it on my screen. Let me just type it in. I go spreadsheets. It's a Google Sheet. There we go. I'm going to go into course plan. So let me share this screen with you. This one. Okay. So this here is an example of a, a course that I created a while ago. And this is a bundle of courses. So down here are all the different goals that I have. Then these are all the learning outcomes. So this mm -hmm. is learning outcomes, three learning outcomes for one course. Yeah, and then okay. I go into the knowledge, skills, and abilities. And I just move that there. So I've also got another one here, another one here. I'm trying to find the other one that I have. Okay, if I go into this one here, I've got another one that I'm starting. And what's important at this stage is that when we've got our learning outcomes, we then break them down to our knowledge, skills, and abilities, which is what we just looked at. Mm -hmm. uh, look at these yeah so once you've got your outcome you then break it down so to be able to achieve this outcome for my clients to be able to recognize da -da 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 -da, they need to be able to and we break that down even further mm -hmm. so we say okay well for them to be able to recognize this they need to be able to um understand xyz they need to be able to create abc mm -hmm. they need to be able to identify they need to be able to conceptualize. Okay, and it's, it's really easy to talk about it in, um, in hindsight when we've already got something, but when we design it, it can be quite difficult. So let me show you another one. If I can so Kat, back there you had, um, so your competencies were broken up into knowledge, skills, and abilities, each, yes. each one. So each learning outcome then had a knowledge, a skill, and an ability. It does because of the way my mind works. That yeah. What I so want you to do don't. Is, you don't have to. No. This okay. is one of the biggest questions that I get. The reason why is that this is an example. So I wanted mm -hmm. to have an example so that people can see what it looks like. They can see all these different levels. But if we've got this one for example understand then the yeah. learning outcome is only a knowledge outcome right yeah okay and that's in the knowledge cool. yeah. one, in the knowledge outcome you might have more than one because mm -hmm. remember if we come back to here if you can still see me is yeah. that our our knowledge section that i talk about here when we've got knowledge skills and abilities is our knowledge and our understanding so our overall mm -hmm. comprehension because we might have the knowledge of something Right, mm -hmm. we might have the knowledge of a piece of data, right? Like yeah. I might have an, a, a knowledge set of the percentages of 
I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head. Like I might have a, the knowledge, the piece of knowledge that the current vaccines have decreased um, the chance of going to hospital by 50%, right? But I don't really understand that. So I have to do more research to understand, well, why? Why is yeah, that okay. happening, right? So that's the different levels that you would see in comprehension is first, well, what's the piece of information I have? And then do I comprehend it? Okay. So you might have in this knowledge level, you might have more than one, but you do mm -hmm. not have to have a knowledge, skill and ability for all three. Additionally, you might have right down the bottom here, you might have an ability here that uses the knowledge and skills that you learned at the top. So likewise, you don't need to have the knowledge and the skills and the abilities because it's assuming that you've already learned them in a previous outcome. Okay, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That's yeah. great. So for example, I used to teach project management in, in business. So in a business certificate that I used to teach, I used to teach certificate three, certificate four, and diploma. And in each one, we had a project management subject. But each time, they would get a little bit more tougher. Now, mm -hmm. when we got to the diploma, we weren't going to go back and teach, okay, well, let's, let, let's learn about what is a goal in a project? What are objectives in a project? What's, what's the project constraints? Because the assumption's there that they're already confident in that. So then we just remind them, we bring that yeah. knowledge back by maybe just re uh, not re-enhancing, but... Um, Recapping. Recapping, thank you. Just maybe having a short video, like what I've done today. Remember what a goal is. Remember what an outcome is. You know, just simply, yeah. completely, re just revising that, but not going down into the depths of what yeah. is a goal, what is the outcomes, right? So what I wanted to look for is this one. This is the example that I give out, which has instructions here. And then I wanted to give an example, right? Because before mm -hmm. I was saying, well, it can, you can do this for everything, right? It's so easy to say how to create a learning outcome and a knowledge and a skill and ability, but then when you put it to practice, it's a little bit more difficult. So I wanted to talk about this apple example, right? So I said, how to peel an apple? Because what is so strange for me here in Chile is that people peel vegetables and I have no idea why they peel it. They wash them and then they peel them. And then I think, why do you need to wash them and then peel them? Either wash them or peel them, don't do both. Anyway, so this was kind of fresh in my mind because of what happened in the morning. So I thought, okay, well, how to peel an apple? Well, first, like what I'm in mean, is why do you even peel an apple? And so I said, okay, well, this for this is a learning outcome of understand the importance of peeling an apple. And they just have to have the knowledge, recognize why it's important to peel an apple. I think more. <laughs> what, what utensils can I, what utensils can I use? Identify different utensils that can be used to peel an apple. Identify which utensils can be used for peeling apples and discover the results of using different utensils and their impact on the apple. Right, what's the difference between using a peeler, vegetable peeler, a knife, a fork, a spoon, obviously. You have the assumption that people don't use a spoon to peel an apple. Um, and then I had experience in using different utensils and techniques. So here I had two knowledge sets and I had one skill. And I didn't even go to the ability because I thought, okay, well, we can just practice that over and over again. You might not have to have the ability because you might only do this once. But yeah. this is a good way to then see, well, what do we do yeah. next? And what do we do next is we go to our course outline here. Now here, I need to put another row in here that pulls in the learning outcome and the competencies. And mm -hmm. this is where the magic happens, what I like to call it, because this is where we say, for someone to be able to understand the importance of peeling an apple, for someone to be able to recognize why it's important to peel an apple, what type of lessons can I create? Right? Maybe I'm not going to do an interview where I'm interviewing someone and I'm asking them. Maybe that, that isn't really useful. Maybe I can use a blog. Maybe I can use a YouTube video, right? But yeah. what, like, what lessons are going to help me? These are just examples here and I've got a lot more than yeah, I can yeah. But likewise, I can say, okay, well, to be able to practice something, to be able to use different techniques, then the most suitable is a video demo. Yeah. Right? Just like now, I could talk yeah. about this. I can talk about this matrix and it probably won't click if I'm just using my hands to explain it. But showing it yeah. is the way that it's be like the best way to, or the best content type, let's call it. 
Yeah. So this is what you need to I guess, to work on Kat, that. you also Sorry. have to consider all the different learning styles of your potential clients and that some people, you know, like trying to cover a multitude because you don't know what their different learning styles will be. Is that? It is, yes. But learning styles, we could talk, we could talk about learning styles for ages. But there's a good point because yes. learning styles... <laughs> Uh, something that was explored many many years ago and now is being like a debunked myth because oh, right. we can but let me explain it because it's it, it's a good it's a good point to make because let's say for example I say I best learn through video right I best learn through video and then someone creates a course for me that's all based on videos but it doesn't help me achieve the outcome always so let me give you an example. Yeah. I was learning how to sew. I was learning how to thread a, what's that thing called? It's not a sewing machine. It's the other one that, an overlocker. So an overlocker good. has four different threads that have to go in the right way. If they do not go in the right way, the scissors at the bottom cut the wrong thread and it just doesn't work. And so yeah. I read the instructions. I used the color code. I watched a YouTube video and I did all of them. And finally, when I watched the YouTube video, it kind of clicked because I could see what they were doing. Now, my experience of threading an overlocker was zero. I had never yes. done it before. So for me, the video was useful because I could practice this skill. However, if I was going to a cooking class, so when I look at a new recipe, I never watch a video, hardly ever watch a video. If I do, I fast forward because mm. my experience with cooking is much higher than my experience with sewing. So for me, yeah. I can read a recipe and say, okay, well, I don't have that in my house, but I know that I can use this substitute and I don't have that or I'll Google this substitute here. Um, and then I just look for like the verbs of, well, am I boiling this? And what am I doing? But I don't yeah. have to read it overall because my experience kind of tells me what I need to do. So yeah. someone can say to you, I prefer videos. And that's one part of it but that's their preference that's what they like that's how they like to consume content but if they were coming to you and someone says i love to watch youtube videos and then what they really need is support where they're bouncing ideas off other people yeah you know, having a support group then if you were to give them pre-recorded videos because that's their preference the but it doesn't yeah. help them in achieve the goal of your course right? yeah and do you think, Kat, also with the overlocker example, it was the fact that you'd also had the ability to read up before you watched the video so that, it, you know, like, so you had multiple, yes. like, ways yes. of getting the information before you did the exactly. final. Exactly. I think that's a, that's a good point to, write, to raise mm. because in e-learning, if there's, I'm trying to think of the word, um, Choosing just one piece of, choosing just one content type can be, can be discriminatory. People yeah. may not be able to read. People may not be able to listen to your video. People may not be able to see your video, right? So having, having multiple, multiple. multiple ways of sharing the same idea is useful. So for example, you might have a video and then attach that video as additional resources is the transcript of that video. Yes. A podcast the same. You see, you might see a lot of podcasts that have the transcript below it, right? Yeah. So then you are not being discriminatory. You yeah. are giving multiple options. It's more open. It's more, like you said as well, that maybe you've had a chance to read up about something before going to a live class, then it may help me get more value from that live class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's not a learning style. Okay, sorry to take you off topic. <laughs> no, that was really that was really important because this is yeah. something that I've just written recently. I've just released a blog yesterday, and the blog was talking about content types. And I wrote in there that don't get confused between what content types are needed for your clients and what their preference is on how they yeah. like to consume content. And I specifically spoke about this, so it's absolutely relevant to this point. Okay. <laughs> okay so what you need to do next yo is okay. start to identify how you can share this knowledge so like we said one of your courses is going to be a support group but yes. is there information that you can share with them 
before they come to these sessions? Are there activities that they can do? For example, one of my other clients, she has so many activities that she's given to people that they need to do throughout the week before they come yes. to that live session. And that live session is an opportunity for reflection. Okay. Yeah. Right? It's not an opportunity to say, okay, well, what should I do to solve this problem? It's an opportunity for reflection. How did you go during the week? What questions mm -hmm. do you have now? How can I support you now in this live format after you've done X, Y, Z? Yeah. So yeah. that's a, um, a point, an important point that you, you raise is that maybe you can see, going back to my Apple example, maybe yes. when I say identify different utensils, it's not just about a video demo. Maybe I can give them an article or a blog that has different, different ways that you can peel an apple. Maybe I yeah. can do a case study. And this is a bit of, this is just having a little bit of fun. But if yes. I was to go back yeah, yeah. to this one here of a real course that I've designed, if I go to my course outline here, I can okay, say, yeah. okay, well, to be able to define a learning outcome for this one, I'm going to give case studies. Why mm -hmm. is it so important to understand your outcomes? We're going to do live webinars and Q&As to start to talk to people about identifying what their outcomes are. We're going yeah. to do reflection questions and pre-unit quizzes. When I did this course, I was doing this course with educational professionals. So there was mm -hmm. an assumption that they already knew what learning outcomes were. Okay, yeah. so this is what's important, that I knew who my clients were. I knew that they already had an understanding. I just wanted to recap it. So I did yeah. a pre-unit quiz that kind of gathered that information which was a scenario-based quiz. I gave them a scenario, they had options to choose from, and then they reflected on their, on their responses. And pretty much all of them had the right answers because they had, um, so there's so much thing on my screen, because they came from this background, right? And I knew yeah. that. So I knew that I didn't have to go, what's a learning outcome? Why do you have to use learning outcomes? I more went, what do you know so far about learning outcomes? And what yeah. would you like to know, right? And then yep. testing their knowledge. But if I was doing this learning outcomes, let's say nine months ago with you, it would be mm -hmm. completely different lesson types because you were coming in with a completely different experience level to some yeah. of these, these people that I had, people that did this, did this course were one gentleman was an owner of a training organization in Australia and he was he had been doing training courses for years and years and years face to face. And now he was pivoting to online. Yeah. So he had this vast experience, just not the e-learning part, right? Yeah. Um, so understanding, if we go back to what we were speaking about at the very beginning, understand who your clients are and where they currently are. Mm -hmm. And their current experience helps you then design the journey for them. You know, rather than yes. yeah. designing a course for it's like. It's like you, you're a counsellor. If mm -hmm. you were to go to a course, download a course and or sign up for a course, sorry, and they start off with going, what's counselling? You'll be like, oh, wow, like this yeah. is real. This is what I learned five or 10 years ago. This is not something I need now. And it's probably yeah. not designed for you, right? So that's something. So you sort of have to choose sometimes, like just pick a point and say, this is the, this is where I'm going to, this is, where I expect them to be and this is where I'm going to focus on because, you know, with mine, they can come from so many different baselines. Mm -hmm. so, so is that, so sometimes you've just got to draw a line in the sand and go, okay, yes. I expect that the people that it would be attracted to this course would at least have this sort of level. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And remember that we've already spoken about this. We've already spoken about the parents that you'll be working with is someone that already is aware that their yeah. child has um, learning their, challenges. Learning challenges, sorry. Um, I was trying not to say something specific, but they have learning challenges. They have special needs. They already know that. They've yeah. already been seeing a OD. OT. OT, sorry. They've already, <laughs> I'm getting all these acronyms wrong. Um, they've already been That's seeing right. OT for several years. It's not your years. area. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so they've already been seeing an OT. They are already aware that they need to have support. Yeah. Right. So yeah, yeah. You know, but that took me a while to get there because I was trying to help the people that didn't, and that you know, like I exactly. that took me a while to get to that spot to realize this is you know for this particular course this mm -hmm. is where I need to be. 
Exactly. So it's not like you're going to come in and say, why do you need support as a parent yeah. with a child of special needs? Because they're already aware of that. They already yes. are at that point that you can go in and say, okay, well, this is these are all things that you can start to implement today. Yeah. Right? Um, yes. Did you have any other questions at all? Um, no, no. Um, I really love that this one that you've got up on the screen at the moment, like breaking down the lesson types and types of activities and uh, types of assessments. I've obviously got that, but I haven't... <laughs> I haven't opened it up yet sorry no that's okay what we need to put in and I need to put in more here so I might send you a, a more up-to-date version as well uh, because yeah. this one is mine where I only yeah. have the ones that I wanted to do right yeah. so I want to put more examples in there and you don't always have to have assessments and assessments don't always have to be assessed like they yeah. don't have to you can have assessments which are used for your clients to assess themselves but you yeah. don't need it to be like a, you cannot continue until you pass yeah. the quiz, right? Yeah. There's different ways that they can assess their own knowledge. And there's different okay. ways that you can do it as well. So yeah. here, while I've said assessments, it's not like a, full, a a summative assessment where if they don't pass, they don't pass the subject. Yes, um, yes, the subject yeah. Of it's just, it's there for them to be able to test it. Not always, it depends what works for your clients. Yes, yeah. perfect. Cool. Well, this was amazing. Oh, I'm glad it's been useful. Yeah. Yes, um, very. And I'm looking forward to seeing you later this week and seeing <laughs> what you've done. No, a couple of days <laughs> is a bit too short. Um, but no, I'll be able to send you the new one um, so that we can talk about it more later. Yeah. Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay. okay well, I'll just Thanks, stop. Kat. You're welcome. Um, I'm just going to let me just stop my screen.